is uh, just a test, really. Got an inch and a half poly ISO insulation, and it's foil faced on the inside that faces the hive. I don't think I can leave this exposed. I'm either going to have to paint that or tape that over. But that slid all the way up. There's actually a gap above this where there's um, two layers of this on the top edge. And then I just made it half of the sheet, which is about 24 inches deep. Um, there's one that hasn't been done yet. You can see the two layers here. So it's actually coming up to this. So you will sort of seal all the way down and create a little cavity all the way down and then their entrances still up underneath there it's open, so. I'm just gonna try this I've got enough to do I think I have enough to do like four or five so I'm gonna put two on tonight look at the temperatures and see if I can do anything a little bit different um, this one's sort of wedged between the entrance and the upper part and then I was able to start taping them together, but as the back was, I had to tape it to the box itself. Um, that does cover the OA vaporization hole. Um, I was thinking about cutting a flap. Just sort of cutting this on, from the inside and just leaving this foil face so that I could flip it up. Uh, I don't know if this is actually a foil face, but just some sort of facing on it. So I could flip it up to do the OA, or I may just have it so that uh, I'm take the tape off and take the back off so that I don't have the heat too close to the that styrofoam. I've got the insulation so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try on some of these. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to pick the lighter hives. I think three is one of the lighter hives. So we'll get insulation on that. This is actually one of the heavier hives but it doesn't have a ton of activity so it may be good to contrast a heavy hive and a light hive against each other. That's all. Just trying a few different things. Um, be nice to put it all together, but I would have to store those somewhere, and I don't really have any place to store them. So for now, I'm just taping them together so I can take them back apart. And it looks like I can get out of one four by eight sheet, I can get two full hives, and then the sides or the ends for the next one. But I am eight frames, so that would be different from someone that has ten frame boxes. But I made the backs overlap more. So this was 17 inches and that was 20 inches. I think this would have to be about 19 inches if it was on a 10 frame box, but you'd have to measure that for your... All of our equipment is just slightly different. Uh, the Man, Life, Man Lake boxes seem to be about an eighth of an inch wider than all the other boxes that we have. Something else I want to point out here is this entrance was propolized shut, and then it was completely open yesterday, and it looks like they're kind of propolizing it back shut. Um, all the other ones that are open are propolized. It's actually November 11th. Pull the telescoping cover off so you can see what's going on in here. And this is two layers of this one and a half inch, and it's foam, or foil taped together. So there's about an inch this overlaps that by about an inch, inch and a half. Well, about an inch. And then this sits on top of the inner cover. That just sits on for weatherproofness. What I am doing is I'm putting two of these chloroplast signs here, just to try to keep things somewhat dry on the top. Let's see if we can take a piece in here. All right, so I got this up. Sorry, using one hand here. And then that's Sensor B, sensor clear inner cover. The insulation goes up to the edge of the boxes. So it sort of nestles down in there. And these are still up here. Propolize this. That shut so nothing can hide up there. How warm that is. It's pretty warm. So, and again, this just sort of, I think I'll leave this top part on year round. Sort of sits down inside this space. Assassin bug. And then this cover is just sitting on top. It looks like, you know, this is not part of the insulation. This is just more for weatherproofing it. Again, this is just a trial. I had extra insulation. Um, this insulation is about $38 a sheet. 
and it makes two and a half uh, frame insulation wraps. So that was part of the sheet. This is part of the sheet. And then I also have two ends made for the next one. So I think these are about $38 for one of those fiberglass wraps. And this is 9.3, R9.3. And another wrapped hive, on wrap. This one's vacant, there's nothing in this one. Wrapped hive, lower weight, and then an on wrapped hive. All of them will have this upper break of insulation. Um, it's really, they propolize the shut, but that's one of the thinner layers, so there'll be condensation in here. And then this rabbit along the top edge of the frame, that's really thin wood, so there'll be a condensation point there. So that's when you get moldy frames, this is top edge. So I was considering putting just a band up here, just so when the hot air comes up, the condensation point's somewhere in this area, probably actually be in the handles but not up in here at the top. But if I've got enough insulation board, I may wrap most of them and try to leave one on rack so as a comparison. It'd be interesting to see if the hive temperature kind of levels off in these insulated ones versus the ones that are not. Um, the green one probably should be wrapped. If we left that one on wrapped, it's green and it won't really won't be a true test because everything else I have are these, this other color. Since we're out here, go ahead and just see what we got in these bottom trays here. Some small high beetles. So They're probably good for the winter. I don't see any pests. I don't plan on getting in these anymore. Got in them in October. This sometimes I paint them too much. There we go. You don't like that, but we've got two dead wax moths that are in there, but they're dead. And small high beetles are okay. It's the larvae that we're looking for right now. That could be a problem. Looking in the tops, though, through these inner covers, everybody seems to be doing fine. Yeah, this is the one that I opened the top and smashed small high beetles. That's right about where the sensor is, so. Some of those are my smashing. Uh, looks like they propolized <clears throat> one of these, so. Ah, interesting. There's a lot of bees in this one. Um, uh, what you're seeing here in this separation is actually condensation. So there is condensation happening in this hive. And yeah, you can see sort of the separation. to get a little moldy in here too, so. It's easy to ignore these bottom boards in the winter, but they need to be cleaned up and dealt with. Just like it's any other time. And <clears throat> again, the, no, the only issue with what I've created here is I probably need to cut something so I can make a flap or take this little the section out so that I can do the OA vaporization. Um, but I think I'm probably gonna have to take these off and rework them in a way that allows me to seal the edges. Again, we got a little condensation down here, not much. Um, I think that's mostly dead ants, it's right along the edge. But I don't see any larvae of any pests, so that's, that's a good sign. There's a little bit of wax moth grass, but well, there's not a ton of it. along the edge, no larvae, some small high beetles. Not bad. And again, this is November 11th, so that's what we're looking at this time of year. And I guess I'll probably go ahead and cut, cut more of those, and hopefully I get enough foil tape to seal the edges on everything. Just something else I wanted to point out if anybody gets this product. Uh, this foil isn't always exactly where it's supposed to be. So when they're giving you these nice little guidelines on dimensions, uh, 24 inches is not at 24 inches. So if you're trying to cut everything exactly, you very well could be off. So it's good to measure that just to check before you do much cutting. When I do cutting, I do use this 
just one of these razors and I just push it all the way out. And then I use a straight edge. I just use this for everything. I clamp this down for my circular saw and everything so I don't have a table saw. And then I just made a notch here, line it up there, and then I just cut it. Cut it like that, just along the edge. And then you can take it off. And this stuff isn't like the the pink and other stuff. Sometimes it binds up. This stuff cuts pretty smooth. So you can pretty much go right back in that same same cut and get a really clean cut off. This is the factory edge. That's the edge that I cut. I probably could have done a little better, but it's nice and flat, so things can be joined together. Pulled all the insulation off so that I could cover these edges. I started with foil tape. Very time consuming. Uh, it seems like it would be a, a good option. Um, but what I ended up doing was I, I painted latex paint. This is just the same color as the high box. Insulation is white. That's just painted to protect it from UV damage. And all the entrances, the part that will be down near these, I put that foil tape on so they don't try to chew on that. Again, this is that poly iso. The radiant barrier will be in towards them so it radiates their heat back in. All the insulation will be on the outside and the white will be on the outside. I'm going to tape them up for now, but I did get some nylon straps to be able to tighten six of them on. I've only got five. Uh, this hive is lower in weight. There's a good amount of bees in it. Uh, I'm not going to insulate anything besides the inner cover. We'll see how they do. Uh, they also have a, an upper entrance. They seem to open and close when they want to. Just a quick look before I cover this up, but that inner cover really gets sandwiched in there pretty tight, so it creates a little cooler down at the bottom. Bottom's closed but not insulated, but hotter it rises, so the hotter can keep the honey pretty warm than the thermal mass should make it easier for them to get through the winter. That's the hopes anyways, we'll see. Hive seven, insulated and buttoned up. And you see the entrance just under here. So they can still fly in. That aluminum tape at the edge so that they won't chew on the insulation. It gets warm out there. Right, this is not five. It's a little bit low in weight, but uh, I don't think we're going to insulate that one just to see how it fares. And then we have I have one, two's bacon, I have three, I have four. And this is when I was trying to wrap the edge with a foil tape, but went a different direction. I did see a big, these big branches fell. I gouged the back of my hive before I put that styrofoam on there. So hopefully, I don't get any tree branches falling on these because they can do quite a number on this insulation. I did put two sheets of plastic up here to make this a little wider, keep water out of the insulation between that and the, the, the hive. Because if water does get in there, it's gonna to stay in there because it's not going to have much opportunity to evaporate. I did cover the oxalic acid vapor hole. Uh, I'll just take those off when I need to do that. I should only have to do one treatment, I hope. And still get to the, the tray so I can do my counts. Uh, they're all cut and they're not really stuck together besides that tape, so I should be able to store them somewhat easily. It will take up some space, but I think I'm okay with, with that. We'll track the temperatures again if we can. Uh, an aluminum face made a uh, kind of like a Faraday cage for all the sensors, so I wasn't getting a reading on some of the uh, lower brood sensors, which were about here. The upper brood sensors, we were getting some, some readings on some of them, but not all of them, so that's all for today.